Welcome. Hello, hello. Tonight we have the charismatic and energetic frogman Tassi from the melodic rock band of this generation, Outerhorn, and he will tell us more about the latest album, Devil's Bell, released by Nepal Records. So Tassi, for those who don't know you, can you introduce yourself by t- telling your trademark and that of your band? How do we recognize you? You will recognize us by, if you hear... Probably the best hard rock you've heard in your lifetime. And you even know you're listening to Order Horn. Now it's uh, Order Horn. It's uh, it, it's like you said. It's very melodic hard rock. It's energetic. It's we focus solely on writing good music and having a good time while doing it. So so our live shows are sort of um, the equivalent to our albums. It's it's about connecting with people and having a good time, really. And uh, I think if you like classic hard work, you should like us, I would think. Certainly, I agree uh, with you, Tosi. This is exactly why I'm listening to Audio Horn. Actually, I saw your first live, and then I went to buy album, and the albums are really great crack. It's like... Melodic hard rock songs, it's old school amazing. Thank you. So, Tosi, in this album, Devil's Bell, um, I listened to the album, really great one. And uh, I like because of the of your influences, because I, I know we spoke in previous uh, interview about your influences, about Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, all this 80s. Uh, a new heavy me- new wave of British heavy metal, mm. and I see clearly in this album. Yeah. Uh, so how you de- uh, how you decide to write uh, this kind of album? Well, um, we don't. In a way, we don't decide to write. We just write. But but before we made this up, like before we make like all of our albums, we always sort of talk about what we want to do mm-hmm. not like to make a blueprint and, and a plan but we just you know you, you you talk about it so so um normally when we when we make an album we we usually have all kinds of grand ideas that we want to do this and that and 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 some guy wants to make it more progressive someone wants to be more poppy someone wants to be more heavy but on before we made this album when we talked about it everyone sort of agreed that let's make a heavy album let's make something that's a bit more heavy let's not go for slow songs let's not you know be very poppy in our production let's just make a heavy metal album and all sort of agreed on that and wanted to do that and i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we sort of realized that Every time we make an album, we saw what we always, you know, the term the grass is greener on the other side. It's, mm-hmm. it's always something I want. Like on, on, on our previous album, Blackout, we did stuff like there's a song called Satellite where we sort of wanted to sort of go into the, the very 80s, like oh, early, okay. like David Lee Roth skyscraper style. And these songs, we never play them live because every time we go on a stage, it's like, what do we want to play? Let's play the things that are fun to play live, you know, and yeah. that's more heavy stuff. So p- there's always people going, why don't you play the slow songs? Why don't you play the ballads? And we're like, <laughs> yeah. next time, you know. So I think that has a lot to do with that. We just, let, let's make an album that could be sort of, that's heavier because that's what we end up playing live anyway. And also, we, when we, before we sort of started writing, really, we talked about the definition of, of our own. We talked about what is, what is our strength, what is that we're good at, you know? Yeah. And I think that 
what we're good at is, I think we're quite good at writing good melodies. And, but the other thing that sort of has become one of our greater strength is, is Alba and Thomas's guitar playing, because they sort of, they started out as two guitar players who sort of basically doubled each other and then one played a solo and on the next mm -hmm. song the other but throughout times they've sort of uh, learned how to coexist and 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 in more and more like twin guitars and so we decided let's focus more on that let's not instead of just putting like a riff chorus and, and a guitar solo let's, let's if we're doing something where there should be a guitar solo, maybe it could be uh, an instrumental part that was more twin yeah. guitar and more like guitar melodies. And and then we said that, well, uh, when we started sort of writing it, we realized that, you know, when you start writing stuff like that, it it leads to wanting to expand that. So, so basically mm -hmm. the album became also more progressive not that we're uh we're not a very progressive band but 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 the song became a bit more progressive with longer instrumental parts mm -hmm. and even a full-on full song but that was all sort of that came out of the idea of sort of trying to use our strength at what we're good at not trying to sort of do things that that seem to be a good idea i'm you know hey let's try to make a disco song you know just <laughs> we want to uh -huh. Very good. Those are interesting takes, uh, like how the album came to be and the sounds. And now I'm thinking of there are indeed longer parts and so on. I love it. And uh, I'm wondering then, because if we look at the reviews, it's speaking to charts and there is a lot of positive buzz. So how do you feel about the album in general? And do you think there is something else? Why there is such an overwhelming positive uh, response on Devil's Bell? Well, I, th I think if I got your question right, I think like the album, I'm very happy with it. I think we made our probably our strongest album to date because it has it has more focus than we've had before, I think. And and also I think with the with the pandemic, we sort of were forced to take a break because we've been we've been doing this for 20 years now and we never really took a break, even though we don't do this full time every day, you know, um we've sort of been going mm -hmm. for twenty years. It's it's in Audrey Horn and 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 then with the pandemic, we sort of had to take a break and we couldn't hang out. And so, which was good because then, you know, we spend time with families, more time with family and, and we spend more time doing other stuff. Like Abe made an album with a sort of a, just a side project that he, he created basically. And, um, and, and, you know, I focused a lot more on drawing and art and stuff like that. So, so I think everyone sort of took a break, but I think that was good for us because then when we started writing stuff, we sort of, we were rebooted in a way, you know? So, so I think in, in my opinion, this is probably our strongest album and I think, and, and the reviews we got and, and the, like the feedback from from the people who buys our music and 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 follows our music uh, is pretty much the same. People say pretty much that that it's it's like very um, and and uh, and that it has sort of something that's you might not be able to sort of pinpoint exactly what it is, but it has something that sort of lifts mm -hmm. a little bit from 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 our previous works. And uh, mm -hmm. so I think with that was that probably came from us taking a break and, and from us having to to write music in a different way and record it in a different way than we normally do because because of a lockdown because you, you could yeah. the 
the way we normally do it because normally we you know we we make our music together in the same room and we record in the same room at the same time we, we mm. record live and then of course fix things and, and do overdubs and stuff but so in a way it was good that reboot and think in a different way and um, because that made us more because normally we just like oh, okay it's time to make some new songs and then you just start and you don't really have like a, you have a vision and you have a, a focus but but not in the sense that we have it was a lot more focused especially from, from our other side who produced it and and sort of had a very clear vision on how he wanted the album to sound and what he wanted the album to be you know yeah, that's interesting for me. Uh, I um, I can find myself in a lot of points. You are selling us a toxic lot for me as well. This album, I don't know for some reason, it's more complete. I would say than the other ones, like the videos, are nicely fitting together with the sounds and like the everything is in a flow. It's hard to say what it was, but like. You said it might be yeah. twelve, being like twenty years doing hard rock and so on, and I think it's a great continuation this album, and I think it has a different angle, like you said, it might be longer in some parts as well. It's it's great, like yeah, I, I think sort of what made me sort of think about and realizing that this was a much more strong album is that like every time you make an album you spend a lot of time on writing the music and listening to the music and and, and you 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 make changes and you listen again and you so you listen to the, the songs billions of times almost and then you record it and and then you mix it and everything so when the album is done you sort of normally you listen to it for a little bit and then you sort of have to take a break from it you sort of have to okay mm -hmm. I have, this away because I'm, you know, I, otherwise I'll be tired of the songs before we go on tour, you know. But I noticed that on this, I sort of, I listened to the album myself more. And I, I sort of, I didn't, I didn't have that, I'm tired of it feeling, you know, which is a good sign in my book because that means, to me, it means that um, we've made something that, that's like, little bit better than what we've done before you know but yeah, it's exactly. a matter of taste for our first album because it's a different kind of music altogether and some some prefer young blood because that has more more like it's more gritty and more more not that produced it's more raw out in, in many ways so so it's a matter of taste but, but i i to me this is our it's uh, interesting points to just take note and just let uh, think about this. Thank you. About the sound. Sure. Cool. So what is uh, Devil's Bell? How did you come up with this title for the album? Well, uh, it sort of came from where a lot of things come when I, when I write melody lines. I... I, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, we 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 go into our rehearsal studio, or we record a demo, whatever we do. I just listen to the music and I sing to it, and try to make. I just sort of explore, okay. find mm -hmm, maybe I should go there, or maybe I should go there. <laughs> or, you know, and when I do that, I have to sort of sing words. So I just make up whatever comes to my mind and and you can't really think about what you're singing because if you think about that then you sort of lose focus on what you're supposed to do which is the right melody line so when i do that you know you sing the songs over and over and over and and yeah. there's always some or a synthesis that sort of keeps and the song devil's bell that word sort of devil's bell came back every every time i sang it so i and i liked it it, it sounds good I, and I, a lot of my are are one of the things that are important in hilarious is basically that 
that it sounds good because yeah. vocal is an instrument to sound good and you want a riff to sound good you also want the vocal and the words to sound good, you know so i like devil's bell i liked how it sounded it and then so i sort of had to google it to find out what what is devil's bell really and then <laughs> uh, I, I really find any like very clear definition on what devil's bell was except that is a flower called devil's bell but that's not that interesting really to think about okay so um but uh but i found a poem a poem uh, uh called the inch cape rock where they use the term devil's bell which is a poem about uh uh, they build, uh, there's a rock and every time there's a storm, the ships keep going aground on that rock and sinks. Mm -hmm. So they build this tower to, to ring the bell every time it was a storm. So, so the ships and the sailors would know that, okay, stay away from that. And then or there's, a, there's a pirate who tears down that tower bell because he, he profits on, on, on the ships going down. And of course, in the end, uh, at the end of the poem, he he he's returning back home, and a storm comes up, and of course, he, he hits the rock, and and the ship goes down, and he drowns. So it's a it's it's about karma. It's about you know how how you treat other people might get, hit back on you. If you treat people kindly, then people will treat you kindly, and if you don't, they will not either. So. And I think that sort of a lot of the lyrics on this album is about is about human nature, how we how we and a lot about the darker sides of human nature, which is sort of a, a part of us. You know, we're not what good. The... We're not we're somewhere in between and some are more good and some are more bad. But but it's all a part of us. So. So uh, when we sort of we're thinking about a title for for the album we looked at sort of the the theme of the of, of the lyrics and 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 wanted to sort of extract something from that and then devil's bell was a pretty obvious choice not just because of the whole sort of meaning of the poem that i was inspired by but but also the fact that devil's bell sounds like a good album title because i think an album title should be good. I, li I like you know um uh, blackout i thought was a good album title even though mm -hmm. scorpions had used that earlier but and and young blood was a good title because it it's it just and yes, i think an album yes. something that sounds good you know Maybe in this album, would you, you have to put, maybe you have to put in this album Pure Heavy. <laughs> pure Heavy. It could have been Pure Heavy. We yeah. just jumped the gun. And yes. Used the two. I love the album title, and it's quite an interesting story. I will be looking, yeah. when I will be listening to this album and reviewing it, I will be looking with different eyes, with new knowledge. It's how interesting, and I think it certainly fits uh, album and it's very strong like first time i heard the first uh, video if i'm not mistaken it was devil's bell and i'm like i remembered watching the video what the album was what the song was being mm -hmm. sung about so it, it's very strong i would say yeah and i think that you know i i i, I very often uh, i spend way too much time on youtube <laughs> I, I love like seeing interviews with artists where they talk about their music and and watching documentaries about bands mm -hmm. and artists and the music they make because because there's always like you said now how you sort of you see things with a different with different eyes because like when i when i listen to someone talk about an album that i like and then all of a sudden you hear a story about a song and and all of a sudden it makes sense you know you you know you like the music you like the song and then you hear some background information and it sort of clicks uh, and and then and for me very often it makes 
it makes the music more powerful because all of a sudden you sort of you 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 kind of unlock a key opens something and and i think that is very inspiring and a lot of like when i when i sort of draw inspirations for 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 lyrics and and for music in general it is a lot not just of course everyone is inspired by other music they hear but i get inspired also a lot by listening to artists talk about their music and and mm-hmm. and you know when i see a documentary uh, about how someone made an album i could go all like Shit, i want to go into the studio and make an album now because mm-hmm. you get so inspired by it mm. exactly you just described uh, yeah. more or less how i'm feeling now about audrey's horn latest album devil's bell basically inspired glad, glad i was able to sort of explain this because sometimes it's difficult to you know when people ask you what, what is that lyric about and it's yeah you know, <laughs> Sometimes it's hard because it's not it's not like well this is a song about a mass shooting at a school or this is a song about uh uh when they built the Eiffel Tower you know it it's not about that it it's more uh an abstract thing really a lot of it so, so sometimes it's hard to explain and 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 sometimes when I do interviews afterwards I said fuck did it make sense what I said you know did they- <laughs> I mean, but you know, you will read the uh, review and you'll be like, looking, is this what I meant? You're like, I listened <laughs> and uh, interpreted everything correctly or wrong. <laughs> we'll see. But now let's talk about the artwork because I think it's also open to uh, interpretation. And so far, I read you did the artwork. Is it correct? Yeah, I did. So I'm wondering, what did you, uh, well, we talked about stories, so I think you wanted to illustrate uh, the story, um, but tell us, is this what you wanted to illustrate the story or something else behind it? Um, the whole story is that um, we made a different artwork, really, in the beginning. We had an artwork mm-hmm. and we were happy with it. We think it looked cool. It was it was, you know, Audrey Horn is a very democratic band, so everyone has a saying on everything, basically. So, mm-hmm. you know, more happy with it than others. And then, but we kind of agree that, okay, but this is a good artwork, let's go for this. And then it was actually people outside the band, you know, uh, that sort of commented on, on that they didn't like it. And okay. we were like, well, we- <laughs> So, mm-hmm. what the heck? <laughs> um, but we asked them, like, why, why don't you like it? You know, what is it that you don't like? Because the fact that they didn't like it, that's a matter of taste. And we can't sort of relate to that, really. Because if they don't like it, it doesn't matter if we like it, you know. But we asked yeah. them, why don't they like it? And we didn't, we didn't really get a good answer for that. So we were like, yeah, well, fuck you. Then, then it stays as it is. But then, one guy. <laughs> reason I don't like it is that it doesn't tell a story. And I thought, that, well, that makes sense, you know. That that well, it, well, it, it, it's a fair point, you know, because that's that's a valid argument. So we sat down and said, okay. We talked about it. Is this an artwork, the one we already had? Is this something we're willing to go to war over, you know? And then we kind of agree that it's not really, it's, it's a good artwork, but it's not something we want to start a war with the people around us with. So, and then um, it was actually our, our record label, Maple Moon, that asked mm-hmm. me if I would make an artwork. And I said, of course, I made artwork for us previously, and, and I, I love doing that. So, so I thought, well, he said it, that it doesn't make a, it doesn't tell a story. So I, I said to myself, okay, let's let's make something that tells a story. Basically, like like you said, the, the poem that I got 
some of the inspiration for Devil's Bell from. And I basically just illustrated that. Uh, because then, and then the other guys in the band agreed and said that, that that's a good idea because then sort of the title and the, uh, and, and the music and, and the artwork, everything sort of gets more connected because pre, the, the original artwork we had was good, but, but it probably didn't connect that much with, okay. with the title. It, it sort of, in our minds, it did because there were some elements that made connected to them, but, but that was, this one is easier to, to connect to with, with the, with the title. So, so it's, it's, it's basically what you said. I, I sat down and illustrated that story basically. Great. And, uh, it's interesting how this whole album came to be. And you mentioned you did some, uh, on the previous albums, you did some illustration as well, the cover. So I'm wondering then. Uh, did you make the illustration for every album of Audrey Horn or only a few ones? And how different was this experience on this latest album of being the illustrator? Well, uh, I made the artwork for Youngblood. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that was a completely different experience because uh, everyone, well, like, Everyone in the band loved it, and uh, but our record label hated it. So I sort of had to fight quite a battle to 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 get my way with that. But it ended up like I wanted it to to be. And I still think it's cool artwork. So and I also I also did the artwork for Blackout. I didn't actually take the picture, but I sort of created the whole how it was supposed to look uh, and I, together with a photographer because I'm not a good photographer so um, and I sort of did the same thing on our first album No I Banda actually with the same photographer uh, but Le Fall was made by one of my coworkers, who's an amazing painter. And then our pre self-titled album was done by a graphic designer that we didn't know. It was just someone we hired to do it. Mm -hmm. And Pure Heavy was done by a friend of ours who's a graphic designer. And that's about it. And then the live album we sort of, we did together with a graphic designer. So. So I've been involved in a lot of them, but I, I fair to say that I made three of them basically. Amazing. And the ones you illustrated like are my favorite uh, albums. <laughs> yeah, and this one, Devil's Bell, I, this is like really my favorite one as it tells a story, like you said, it's coherent. Thank you. Cool. As we see now, the life, you know, turning, turning back to normal, I see. So any plans for touring, Tosi? Yeah, it is. We, we were originally going to go out on tour um, right about now, basically. Um, but that tour uh, was, has been postponed because, well, basically because of a lot of things that are still difficult uh, yeah. it has a lot to do with the financial part of of, of the tour so mm -hmm. it made it very hard for us to do that tour so um, and after taking advice from 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 booking agents and stuff we decided to 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 wait a bit so what we're going to oh. do is we use shows here in Norway, we're going to do some now, and and we, but we don't have many festivals because basically festivals that are happening now are the festivals of 2020. They have just been yeah. moved to 20, <laughs> and two, and then some of them have been moved to 23. Yes. So basically, the ones we because the summer of 2020 was sort of 
was going to be uh, that was when we were going to write and record an album basically that we of course couldn't do so um so we didn't have any festivals then uh except for one um so we don't have much festivals this summer which is a shame but uh, yeah that's the, I understand. Have but, but from like after the summer it's things are are being booked so there will be and but hopefully we will get to do uh, more stuff before that but but it's uh, yeah it's like you said it's it, it's like the pandemic is over but it's there are so many like consequences of the pandemic that yes, are still, yes. still yes. there hard mm. there is restrictions maybe country to country yeah but maybe yeah. we can do something there in Norway so mm. that would be nice also yeah absolutely yeah. And hopefully yeah. someday Dublin. Something yes. I think <laughs> Horn hasn't been yet. Sorry, where? No, Dublin. I think you've been. Yeah, Ireland. you've been to Dublin. Oh yeah, we played in Ireland. Yes, 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 yes. I'm but only playing. once, eh? We played only once. I played there twice. Ah, twice. Oh, okay. So, but then it's been a long time to see you live. <laughs> it's way overdue to come. Yeah, so long time ago, I forgot. Uh, I just moved like three years ago. So no Audrey Horn. Yeah, for your time. So. <laughs> so I would like to dive in now into the videos that comes with Devil's Bell. Uh, we talked in our previous uh, interview about having roots in the extreme as Audioron is from Norway. I watched a video where there was a lot of corpse paint. So I'm wondering, how does it fit the attitude and the melodic heart sound of Audioron? Well, it was kind of a... Because uh, uh, we, we released three videos for this album. Yeah. That was Dub and and the latest one, Animal, and they were all done by the same guy, which is, um, which is a guy that I found because I um, I saw the latest Abad video called Dream Call, 